Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. Today we're going to talk a little bit about working with dancers who might come into your studio. Um, dancers often need Pilates for a variety of reasons. Um, they tend to have a lot of proprioception and body knowledge of very specific um, exercises and planes of motion, but sometimes they need a little bit of extra information, especially regarding the use of turnout. Um, and so what I want to start with today is releasing in the glute with a tennis ball. And so we'll just take the tennis ball and you'll just find the glute tissue and kind of roll around. And so if they've never done any of this kind of release work, um, they could be pretty wound up in their hips and it might be a little painful, uh, but this would be really good feedback for them and something that they should be doing regularly. Uh, regardless of the kind of dance, usually they are using some sort of external rotation. And if they haven't ever fully um, learned how to access their deep rotators, a lot of times they'll be using the glute to stabilize the hip in an externally rotated position. And while the glute does help to externally rotate, it's not the, um, the preferred musculature that we'd like to use. We really wanna to try to activate those deep external rotators so that the hip can move more freely and that the glute can really be used more for extension. So you wanna have them do this for several minutes on each side. Um, you can even have them lie back and kind of rotate internally and externally. Um, just to get a little bit more of a deeper focus um, on that hip. Um, but at any rate, you wanna start with some release. So after you've released the hips fully with the tennis ball, then you want to add another prop. And it can be either be the smart spine globe that we have here in the studio, which is lovely, or um, an overball that's slightly deflated. You can even use a rolled up towel if you wanted. But this is designed to help the mover not grip in the glute. And that's the whole idea here. Because many people, and dancers especially, want to feel like they're working really hard. And often, they're working harder than they need to. And so having this prop right under the, um, or in front of the coccyx, right, it will help them to find that vertical alignment and it will encourage them not to overgrip in the glute. So we start with just a parallel alignment and you'll notice that I have socks on and I'm sliding on the wood floor. You want to create a glide so that they're not um, on the mat or on carpet, right? That wouldn't be as successful. So you wanna find that ease in the legs where you can lengthen through the spine and work deeply from the pelvis. And when, this is, when they're successful here, then you can start to go into that external rotation but you want to make sure that they're not hyper um, activating in their glute. So if they're not using the glute, they have to use the deep external rotators. And so that's what we want them to find. And so they're going to turn out into this easy first position. They're going to be lengthening through their spine. A lot of core work happening here. You could have them um, bring their hands to the front back body so that they're bringing that together and paying attention to how they're using their core as they're working the legs. And it's just an easy um, bend of the knees coming as far in to the um, pelvic floor as they can. And then if you want to challenge it even more, you can start to add a port de bras. So dancers love challenge, but you want to really bring them into a place that's supported and a place that they can really focus, right, on using those external rotators without gripping in the glute. And the result of that will be tenfold. Their legs will get lighter. They should have less lower back and perhaps knee pain. Um, and there's just a whole lot of reasons to create more freedom in the hip and really isolate the muscles that you need to create the movement instead of overburdening the skeleton with too much. That's it for today. If you have a different take on today's subject or if there's anything you'd like to see covered in an upcoming episode, we'd love to hear from you. Comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or in the forum at fusionpilatesedu.com. See you next time and never stop learning.